Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. If you're not doing good, you're in the right place. Amen. You're in a place for encouragement. You're in a place for support. You're in a place of restoration. You're in a place where broken pieces can be mended back together. Amen. That's in the presence of God. You know, I, I began to think as we were as we were singing that that song right there, Brother Wesley, do you mind going back to that bridge? I was I was looking at something and thinking about something, and and this is just this is just something like I said that came across my mind, and um, and it's that word shout right there, the word shout, and. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty loud person. I think it's in part for the mix because my hearing is not so great either. And my wife tells me that I need hearing aids. And uh, I told her that she that was a lie from the devil. But she's probably right. So a lot of times I talk loud anyways. But you know, there are only certain times in my life that I actually shout. I shout when I'm at a football game on Friday night or Sunday, or excuse me, a Saturday. You know, one of the two, if something great happens, I shout. Same thing if something bad happens. I shout. If I get hurt, I shout. If I'm at my wit's end and I don't know what else to do about something, maybe I start to get frustrated, I shout. And I begin to think about, you know, how many times when we experience all those different things in our life, do we shout? But when it comes to our spiritual well-being, we just let things go and we just bomb it all up inside and we say, you know what, you know, I'm just going to leave this down here because I don't want anybody else to know that I'm struggling. I don't want anybody else to know that I'm hurting. And sometimes we get to the point where we say, I don't want anybody to know that, that I'm really excited because I don't want to make them feel bad. I want you to know that if God's blessed you, you need to give him some praise. Amen. You need to shout to him. If you're hurting and struggling and feeling just completely empty and broken inside, you need to shout to him. Because he's all knowing. And he's the only one that can take our situation and make it better again. He can make it like new, better than new. And then once he does that, we should shout again. See, I begin to think about that verse right there. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And we're going to talk a little bit about the mountains this morning. But it not only says shout Jesus from the mountains, because when we're in the mountains, normally, you know, you're thinking about you're at the top of that mountain. Everybody ever, anybody ever went to Stone Mountain or, or hiked up any other mountain before by show of hands? I know y'all will be surprised. I don't want anybody to fall out this morning, but I have hiked up to the top of Stone Mountain. All right. It didn't fall. It was able to hold me. Okay. I promise. It's still there. And I didn't die on the way up. So that's a good thing. But when we got up there, has anybody ever, you know, once they reached a place of elevation like that, you just get up there and you just, ah! Like, you know, I'm the king of the world! You know, something like that. I begin to think about, you know, we shout during times like that. But it also says that we should shout Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus in the darkness. Shout Jesus over Whatever your enemy is, and shout Jesus for your family. Yes. See, when I really care about something, like my well-being, I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be stuck with needles or anything like that. You know, my family, I love my family. I care about it. And when stuff happens, that's when I shout. I love my kids dearly. When they do something that I told them not to do, I get angry and I shout at them, right? But it's because I care about them. See, if I didn't care about them, I could just care less. You know, they didn't listen to me. Oh, well, whatever. You know, I'll just go my separate way and, you know, they ain't my kids. 
I ain't worried about it. But when it's my kids and I care about them so much, I want to see them raised up to be something great. And that's why I shout. See, we're God's children in this place this morning. And just as I shout at my kids when something's going on, when they've got something going on, they begin to shout at me. If they need help, they say, Daddy. And they yell it. They'll yell it across the yard, across the house, across the church, wherever it is. They'll yell out to Daddy or Mama because they need, they need help. I want you to know this morning, if you're struggling with anything in this house this morning, that you've got a father that he's listening for your cry. He's listening for your shout this morning. And he'll hear it. And he'll be mindful of it. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap off for praise this morning. If you got your Bibles, uh, I'd like you to turn with me to Psalm 24. If y'all don't mind just standing for the initial reading of God's Word, I, I appreciate that. Amen. We do have some guests in the house this morning. And uh, let's give our guests a hand this morning. Make them feel welcome. Amen. We, uh, as we say all the time, and I know our, our people are probably sick of hearing this. I hope not. But welcome home to Mount Pleasant. We want this to be a place where you can come and and you can be a part of this family, but you know, a part of something bigger than us. And that's God's kingdom. Amen. Bigger than just Mount Pleasant. All right, let's get in the word this morning. Psalms 24, and I'm going to start reading with verse 3. Now, I'm going to read out of the NLT uh, for this, this passage. Um, so it might read a little bit different in your Bible, but just bear with me. And it should be on the screen there, but Psalms 24 and 3. It says, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. Who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Who may climb the mountain? Who may stand in the presence? It says here, these questions are asked by David, who's writing this, but the answer is right here in verse 4. It says, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. See, the thing is, is each and every one of us, whether we know it or not, We've got mountains in our lives. See, mountains aren't something new. And they're not going away. I promise you that. You know, it says in our word that, that there's always going to be hills and valleys. Right? Ups and downs. Twists and turns. And I want to remind us that Jesus, when he was talking in Matthew 17, he says, If you have the faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Amen. How many of y'all have the faith to speak to a mountain and the mountain to be moved? Amen. How many of y'all have the faith that if the mountain's not moved, that maybe you understand that that mountain is not meant to move, but God put that mountain there to see if you've got enough faith and endurance to climb that mountain? This morning, we're going to talk about the climb. The climb. Brother Eric, do you mind saying a prayer of the message this morning? Yes, Lord, we love you this morning. We praise you. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here to this place. Lord, I pray that uh, you be with Brother Levi this morning, Lord, as he brings the word. Lord, I pray that you just uh, put it in his heart, Lord. Put it in his mouth. Lord, he would speak, Lord. Just let it be clear. Let everybody understand the message, Lord. We'll make sure that you get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Amen. 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 You can be seated in the house this morning. See, there's there's certain mountains 
that sometimes are in our path or in our walk with God that God has put there himself and you can sit there and, and you can try and wish that that mountain wasn't in front of you you know all you want to but I want you to know that if, if God put it there then it's there for a purpose because it's during times of, of testing that we build character, that we build endurance. And you know, it, it says in my word that, that this race that, that, that we are all running, this Christian race, or this Christian walk that, that we're all going down, it says that it's not the fastest, it's not the fastest, but it's he who endures till the end. He endures to the end will be the one that makes it. And God wants to know if you've got the endurance, if you've got it within you in order to come from within yourself and bring yourself up and say, okay, I can do this. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, but I'm going to do it. And I know that God's going to be right there with me every step of the way. See, each and every one of us, we have these kind of mountains in our life as well. You know, there, there are things that, that we pray over and that, that God will move. But this is how God tests us. And we've got to understand that the test isn't to hurt you. It's not to harm you. But it's to see how faithful are you. How faithful are you for what God has told you to do? You know, I begin to think about, you know, what we just talked about, that endurance, and that it's it's not the fastest. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago in one of our my sermons on Wednesday night that, you know, there's that story of the tortoise and the hare. And, and I'm sure all of us have probably heard this before. And the hare just takes off running really, really fast. And he gets to a point where he's got so much belief that he begins to rest. And he says, you know what? You know, I've got this. I'm good. But that tortoise who ends up winning the race, he might not have been the fastest, but he was consistent. And he never stopped. And he kept going. See, we've got to stop having this Ricky Bobby mentality when it comes to the church, when it comes to our spiritual relationship with God it ain't if if you ain't first or last you know because it actually says the opposite in my Bible it says that the last shall be first and the first shall receive a crown amen thank God because I'm not very fast unless I'm in my truck but if we will be consistent in everything we do and not just consistent but persistent. Yes. If we'll give it everything that we've got, then I know that God will bring us through it. See, when we talk about climbing a mountain, that looks pretty rough, doesn't it? Man, I'm getting tired just looking at that. Honestly. See, that would be a very tough mountain to climb. And there's some jagged edges and things like that. I'm sure there's some loose rocks. I mean, it would, it would be scary. But can you imagine climbing something like that? Everything that you would have to go through, the elements, the animals, the environment, everything around you, and then you reach the top. How good that would feel? To look over everything and say, hey, I made it. I'm here. You see, it's amazing when you when you do something like that. But in order to climb that mountain, it has to be something that's chosen from you. Because nobody can climb the mountain for you. Nobody can can make the decision, hey, I'm gonna do this. It's gotta come from you. 
It's your choice. See, we serve a God of free will. He's not going to make you worship Him while we're down here on earth. See, He's given us the opportunity to worship Him now. He's given us this chance to come into this place and to lift our hands and lift our voices to Him. But there's going to come a time to where we don't have a choice. It says that when we stand before Him, it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He's Lord. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't want Him to make me have to worship them because when I stand before Him, I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be trembling. I might be trembling because I'm in the presence of God and I'm really excited, but I want to run to Him and fall on my knees and say, thank you, Jesus. But see, the ones that wouldn't praise Him and worship Him down here, they're going to be made to. And they don't have to confirm that He is the Lord. Climbing a mountain is tough. Even the little mountain, stone mountain that I climbed, it was tough. It was hard. And I want to talk to you this morning just briefly about three different types of people when it comes to mountains. There's quitters, there's campers, and there's climbers. Now what I want you to do during this message is I want you to self-examine your own situation. And I want you to ask yourself, am I a quitter? Am I a camper? Or am I a climber? And I'm going to be honest with you this morning. There's been times in my life that I've been every single one of these yes, sir. in certain situations. There's been times where I, you know, I, I had something in front of me. I had, you know, dreams and aspirations and goals. And I got to go in a little bit and the going got tough. And I said, you know what? This is just too much. I'm going to quit. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm just going to quit and I'm going to go back to what I was doing. Yes. See, God doesn't want you to quit so easily. You know, I begin to think about something I heard as a, a young man, and I can't remember who I heard this from, but, you know, anything worth having is worth working for. And everything that we've got, we've had to work for and earn, right? Now, you might say, well, you know, there's some stuff that I inherited. Well, that means that somebody worked for it so that you could have it. But when we begin to talk about our faith, see, faith can be passed down from generation to generation. And I want to pass down my faith to my children, Brother Mitch. But at the end of the day, I can pass down my faith and try to do, you know, this and that all I want to. But unless they decide to live for God themselves, they're going to be lost. We got work that needs to be done. And I will tell you this that it's so easy in the time that we live in, we've made quitting just such an easy option. We we made quitting, you know, just so convenient, right? I don't know about y'all, but I came from a household to where if I started something. My parents made sure that I saw it through. And I wasn't allowed to quit. But we we live in a time nowadays to where, you know, people just quit things so easily. And, and in fact, I, I feel like, and I'm going to be real with you, I feel like it all starts at home because the parents allow it. And this didn't start just a year ago. I feel like it actually started with my generation. That somewhere along those lines, we just we just made the option of quitting. Just, you know, hey, you know, if it's tough, just don't worry about it. Just you don't, you don't have to do it anymore. Next thing you know, you've got people quitting on their education. You've got people quitting on their husbands and wives, quitting on their children and just walking away. And we wonder why we're in the state that we're in. Why there's so many broken families around. 
You know, I, I don't want to have to worry about my responsibilities. I'm just going to quit worrying about my responsibilities. And, you know, I'm just going to do whatever makes me feel good. And I'm going to, you know, just drink this or, you know, smoke this or shoot up this or, or go sleep with this person or, you know, do whatever I want to. See, God, God has blessings that he wants to bestow upon us. But he wants to know. He wants to know that deep down inside of us, do we want to receive these blessings? Because if, if we've got this mentality that we can quit and that God's still going to bless us, then we've got the wrong mindset. We've got the wrong mindset. God's looking for people that will get out there and work. That will get out there and do the, the will of God and grow the kingdom of God. Work's tough sometimes, right? How many of y'all just wake up? How many of y'all tomorrow morning, on, on Monday morning, you're going to wake up and be like, man, I can't, go to, I can't wait to go to work. This is going to be so much fun. You know, I'm glad that I had to wake up at 6, you know. I, you know, I, I'm glad that I have to fight this traffic to get into Athens now because it's so overpopulated. I'm glad that when I get to work, you know, at 7 o'clock, that I have to go to a meeting to start my day at 7.15. And then all of a sudden, we've already got customers lined up down the, you know, the road. And, you know, we've got to put on our happy, smiling face. And, you know, anybody else have stuff like this in their life? See, when we, when we view these things, see, it's tough. But we've got to understand that so many times we view that as an obstacle. Aaron, you know what I'm talking about? Aaron works with me. With me, so she knows exactly what it's like. I expected her to say amen and start running off, but um, it didn't work out the way that I thought it was going to. It's probably because she's so tired from work. Um, but no, I mean, we, we view these things as obstacles. But if we would change our mindset, and I know I'm going to sound like Steve Middlebrooks here for a second, here. I'm going to sound like my owner. But if we would change our mindset and say, hey, you know, this isn't an obstacle. This, this is an opportunity. And that there's somebody out there that would do everything to trade positions with you. That they would love to have a job. They'd love to have a bed to wake up to at 6 o'clock in the morning. They'd love to have a car to get into and, and go to work. But yet we just complain and complain and complain. See, there's opportunities out there if we'll see them as opportunities. And if we'll start looking at our mountains like that, hey, this isn't an obstacle. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to see not only what I'm made of, but this is an opportunity for me to climb this mountain, get to the top, and show people, hey, this is how good God is. This is what God can do through somebody as simple as is me. Because see, God, He doesn't want us to just live good lives. He doesn't want us to just live just lives like you said earlier, brother bitch. But He He died so that we can have life and life more abundantly. He wants you to have that more abundantly life. And in order to have a more abundantly life, you've got to be willing to climb. He ain't looking for quitters. Revelation 3, 15 through 16, it says, I know your works. That you are neither hot, excuse me, cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I want you to know that God looks at people that, that aren't willing to do the work and it just makes him sick. It makes him sick. I'm pretty sure there's nobody in here that enjoys throwing up, right? If you do... We're going to have an altar call here in a second. I'm going to lay hands on you because you might have some kind of demon inside of you. I cannot stand throwing up. Casey hates it even worse than I do because she's not good at it. I don't know if throwing up is a skill, but if it is, she did not get that skill. Every time she throws up, it's like this huge, you know, ordeal. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. I'm being serious, man. It's crazy. She threw up one time so hard and like she kind of tried to hold it in or something.
that she hemorrhaged and her eyes turned red. Like the white parts. She looked like Darth Maul in Star Wars. If anybody knows who that is, it was crazy. I was like, I don't know if we need to go to church or anywhere else like that because somebody's going to be trying to lay hands on you and pray for you. You know, none of us enjoy throwing up. I, even like, you know, this little like acid reflux I have, and that, to me that's the worst. I, I would rather just, you know, it come up out of me. But, but when it comes up and hits my throat and it goes back down and it's just burning like this, I can't stand that. I can't stand it. How sad is it to think that sometimes God looks it up and he wants to just vomit us out of his mouth and like, you know what, I just want to get rid of these folks. I don't want God to look at me and ever think that. I don't want him to look at you and ever think that. This is why we, we can't be quitters. We can't be lukewarm. It's important that, that we surround ourselves by people that, that want to help us and that they want to succeed with us. See, I'll tell you this morning, if you hang around quitters, then that's what you're going to do as well. You'll quit. But if you hang around people that are driven, that have purpose, that have a plan, and they're willing to do anything that they have to in order to climb on top of that mountain, then you know what? Those people will help you along as well. They'll help you along. It says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, it says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? See, in, in y'all's Bibles right there, Mitch, in your Bible it says don't be unequally yoked, right? See, we've got to understand that that there, there has to be balance in our lives. But when you've got one person trying to live one way and another person trying to live another under the same roof, at some point in time, you may think, hey, you know, this is, this is working. This is going to be okay. At some point in time, it's not. It's going to crash. There's going to be a head-on collision at some point or another. See, God wants us to be in this together. He wants us to be in in this with each other and as a church family who wants us to to help one another to pray with one another that that when one of us struggles we all struggle when one of us rejoices we all rejoice when we see somebody else that you know that, that falls we go and help them back up and we say hey you know i know that my plate pace was a little faster than yours right now but i saw that you you know have fallen here so i'm going to pick you up and i walk with you you can just move at my pace and we'll go together See, that's what God wants. And you might say, well, you know, what if I, what if I go and, you know, and I go and get them and they keep me from getting to the top of the mountain? I mentioned this Wednesday night. That's why you don't go down there and stay with them. Because you've got certain people that have fallen, that have went on the climb, and they got to a certain point and they said, you know what? Maybe they didn't even fall. Maybe they just, you know, got comfortable. And they said, you know what? I'm just going to camp out here for a second. See, these are the campers. These are the people that, that they had good intentions, but they get halfway up the mountain and they say, well, you know what? This is good enough. God didn't call us to live good enough lives. He didn't want us to have good lives. He wanted us to have great lives. He wanted us to have great blessings. He wanted us to be extraordinary. Not just ordinary, but extraordinary. I preached a message one time. Is that a little bit of extra? That's Jesus. Because Jesus can take the ordinary and do something extraordinary with it. See, when you go back down to help somebody else, don't camp out with them. Don't stay there with them. If they don't want to leave that place, you say, you know, okay. Well, I'm going to keep on going. See, what, what happens is that different people coming up that mountain, You'll not only have a camper, but other people will come up and they'll see those people camping and they'll be like, hey, we're just going to camp out here too. And the next thing you know, you've got a whole campsite, a campground, right? 
I want you to know this morning that, and I'm just going to be very real with you right now. Matt, you like football, right? I'm about to have some like Kirby Smart, Nick Saban in town this morning. I will not be satisfied with what has happened at this church over the years that I've been here. I want more. I want more. And I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to go through the struggles because there's times that it's going to be really hard. There's times it's going to be frustrating. But I'm going to keep on climbing until God has taken us to the top of that mountain. Amen. So you want to talk about optional and opportunity. You want to talk about promises and goals and dreams and all these things. See, I remember when the children of Israel, when they were wandering around in the wilderness, they finally got right there on the cusp of that promised land. And they sent all those spies out. And the 12 come back. And they all had the same story. They all saw the same thing. But only two of them said, hey, God's promised us this. Let's go take it. See, only two of them saw the opportunity. The rest of them saw the obstacles. All they could see was the negative. And I want you to know this morning that you might not say, well, hey, you know, I'm not, you know, moving into a promised land or anything like that. And yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe you don't actually have an actual land, you know, that God wants you to move to. But I want you to know this morning that God has given this church some promised land. And I want to break ground on it one day. And I want to see God use it do something amazing with it. And we can look at all these things that are tough right now. And we can say, hey, how do we get from here to there? We keep on climbing. We don't become satisfied with what God is doing right now, but we want more. We desire more. See, Jesus, he had that same kind of mentality that he wanted more for people. He didn't want more for himself. He didn't want to be magnified here on this earth. He didn't. He wasn't worried about the titles, the fame, riches, anything like that. He was here to do a work. In Matthew 5 and 1, and this is in the message version of the Bible. It says, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving in a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Jesus wants to know, hey, are you willing to go up this mountain with me? Because if you're willing to, you can come with me. And I've got things that I want to show you. I've got things that I want to give you. But I love here that it says in this passage, it says, those who were apprenticed to him, the committed. Are you committed to what God wants to do in your life? And it's more than just saying you're committed. It's showing that you're committed. It's going out every day and doing the things that we're supposed to do. It's, you know, going and reaching the lost. Encouraging the, the people that are struggling. God's called us to be more than campers. I used to, I haven't went camping in a long time, but I used to enjoy going camping. Probably not so much anymore, maybe, you know. It'd be kind of crazy with a couple of kids. and I'd be one of those, I'd be like Brother Julio back here, you know. I, I ain't taking no tent, you know. I'm taking me like a, you know, a pull behind camper or something like that. You know, we're going to have like some AC and different things like that, you know. You know, you, you get on that, you get in that tent and, you know, you sleep on that hard ground. And gosh, you wake up the next morning and, don't even feel like you can walk or God, it just hurts because you know I'm getting old. How many times have you seen stories or, or movies or shows to where somebody has slept on something hard for so long that it has become their comfort zone? I can't remember what I was watching the other day, but this guy had slept on a concrete floor for so long that he finally made it back home. And he tried to sleep in his bed, and he couldn't because it, it didn't feel right to him. So he slept on the floor. See, I don't want to be satisfied. I don't want to become comfortable sleeping on the floor. 
I don't want you and your family and your kids to become comfortable right where you're at. But I want you to know that God wants more for you. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul tells us that after Jesus had been crucified, he had risen, that he appeared before the disciples and it says that that he was seen by around 500 people after being risen. 500 people saw him. Think about that. Now, I don't know about you, but if I believed in Jesus, and if I saw this guy that had risen from the dead, that said that he was going to rise from the dead, I'd probably believe what he had to tell me. I'd probably listen to it, I would think. I'd be a little freaked out at first. I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> he did it. But then I'd be amazed. I'd be like, you know, whatever this guy's got going on, he's, he's got something special. And one of the saddest things that I can think about in the Bible is that these 500 people saw him and and Jesus said in Luke 24 and 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He gave a specific example. He was very detailed. He said, Hey, go here, and I've got a blessing for you. And one of the saddest things is that out of those 500 people, that only 120 made it into that upper room. Only 120 people received the blessing that God had for them. But notice who received it. It was the ones that were obedient and that they were willing to climb. See, you probably had a bunch of these people that if they quit right there on the on the spot. And you might say, why, you know, why would they have quit me by him? Because it was going to be a tough time. Christians were being killed in Jerusalem because of their faith. Yes, there was a mountain to climb. There were risks that were going to be taken by going to Jerusalem and waiting. So yes, there were people that quit. There were probably people that made the journey and got right outside Jerusalem and they said, you know what? We can't do it. You know, we're just going to camp out here and, you know, you know, maybe we'll get a little portion of it right here. I want you to know the blessing ain't found halfway up the mountain. It's found at the top of the mountain. The blessing's found in the upper room. And so you had 120 people that were willing to climb up those stairs into that upper room. And they received that gift of the Holy Ghost. They received what God had promised. And it says in Acts 2 and 37, after it had become so much that the room couldn't contain it anymore, that they spilled out into the streets. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, there was a group of people that saw what was going on and said, Hey, I want that too. How do I get this? I want you to know when you're climbing up that mountain, there might be some people that say, Hey, I want to go with you. How, how can I do this? How are you doing this? It's up to us. To minister to them, encourage and support them, and show them the way. Because see, it's not just our generation, but it's the generation after us and after them. This is what Peter talks about here. It says, and with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. See, God wants to do a great work in our lives. 
But we've got to understand that the greatest gifts that he can ever give us are found on top of that mountain. See, when Jesus went up on top of the mountain and he took his inner circle with him, it doesn't say that they got halfway up there and then that's when the transfiguration happened. But it happened at the top of the mountain. If you want to have transformation in your life, I'm here to tell you, don't, don't quit it. Don't camp out, but keep climbing. Keep climbing. Because God has promised you something. And I promise you that if you're obedient and if you're willing and he'll perform this promise in your life. And sometimes it's even greater than we could have ever imagined. See, God charged these men after they had, after they had been with him for so long. One of the last things that Jesus told them in Mark 16 and 15 is to go out to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wanted them to keep climbing. He wanted them to keep pressing and pushing and try and reach as many people as they can. See, Jesus knew that he had a group of climbers. He had a group of people that were devoted and that were committed to doing his work. I ask you this morning, are you committed? Are you committed to doing the work of God? Are you committed to seeing God's promise alive in you? I want you to know that he's got so much more for us than we could ever imagine. Let's stand this morning. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. I'll tell you this. These people that are just high energy and driven and all those things, these climbers, that a lot of times they'll get to the top of that mountain, but they won't stay there because they're looking for another challenge. They're looking for something else greater. And I want you to know that maybe you've been on the top of the mountain at some point in your life maybe you kind of stumbled that back down the mountain and you're, you're in the valley right now. I want you to know there's nothing that says that you can't be back on the top of the mountain. But what I want to know is, are, are you willing to climb? Are you willing to do what it takes to pull yourself out from that valley? It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But I want you to know God's going to be there with you. He's going to be right there with you. I heard somebody tell a story one time, and this is a true story, that there was a gentleman that he tried to climb Mount Everest, and he failed. Have y'all have failed before? He failed. So, he came back down, and he had to face some tough questions because he had told a lot of people that he was about to go climb this mountain. And when he was not successful, I can imagine that he was probably pretty embarrassed. But he said something so profound that you know what? It's encouragement to me. They asked and they said, well, well you know, what are you going to do now? He said, I'm going to go climb, try and climb again. They said, oh, really? He said, yeah. And they said, well, what do you think that's going to be like? And he said, well, he said, I'll tell you this. He said, it's going to be tough. He said, but I feel like I can do it. He said, because that mountain's as big as it's ever going to be. But God's still growing me. I'm still growing. I'm still in a development stage. I want you to know that mountain 
You might not be going anywhere, but it's the same size that it's always been. I want you to know that if you'll start that climb this morning, then you can achieve something great and you can get to the top of that mountain. I want to leave you with just a couple of verses here before we open up the altar. But Paul writes in Philippians. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Philippians was Paul writing from jail. I've never seen somebody so positive in prison as Paul, but he was. And he gave some encouraging words here. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to know this morning, if, even as we've been going through this message this morning, maybe you've been talking to yourself, well, I'm not strong enough, or I'm not worthy enough, because, you know, I, this happened to me years ago. I want you to know God's not concerned with your past. He's not concerned with it. He's concerned with right now, and He's concerned with your future. And I want you to know that if you'll give yourself to Him, that, that that prize that's found in that upward call is waiting on you. He's wanting to know, will somebody come get it? Will somebody stand up, rise up, and say, you know what? I'm tired of being stuck here in this same old situation and how I'm about to go get what, what's mine. I'm going to take back what's been stolen from me or I'm going to go get what's been promised to me. It's just waiting on you. Are you willing to climb this morning? Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for your word. God, I pray that you just begin to, just as up that day of Pentecost, God, I pray that you begin to prick hearts in this place this morning. God, I pray that you would just begin to transform our minds and our hearts, dear Lord, so that we can receive a blessing from you this morning. God, I want to pray that you would just begin to take away any feeling of shame that's in this house this morning, any feeling of embarrassment. And God, I pray that you would just replace it with a sense of purpose. God, I pray that you would just give us that, that energy inside of us to rise up from within ourselves, dear Lord, and take back our lives, take back our families, and align ourselves back with you. God, I pray that you would just do a mighty work in this house this morning. God, give us the courage to, to take that first step out in faith and climb down to this altar and give it back to you, dear Lord. God, I thank you for what you're about to do in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar's open, friend. If you'd like to come spend some time in prayer, we, we'd love to pray with you this morning.